Hey everyone, it's Regalist back with another video. Today we're going to be breaking down this cinematic bird close-up shot. It was actually very fun and easy, and I'm here to share it with you. Sorry it's been such a long time, um, I've just been busy on commercial projects and other aspects of life. Anyways, let's get right to it. We begin on the internet by searching for Sketchfab. It is the best 3D community out there full of people who are dedicated to sharing their awesome 3D work and models. We're going to be searching Hummingbird and we're going to find that there is a very good looking and usable model that we're going to be repurposing quite a bit, but it works just fine. It's downloadable and it's under the Creative Commons license, which is great. While we're here, we're also going to be searching for other usable assets. This can include anything we can use to compile the scene, such as trees, branches, leaves. Most notably, scans work very well. But yeah, the point is to gather a collection of usable materials which you can use to quickly create a scene. We also need to head over to Polyhaven and explore their awesome collection of high quality HDRIs. Um, specifically in the nature section, there are so many options and I'm going to be using this one right here as it fits my vision of the scene. Um, a 2K resolution texture should work fine and we're ready to go. I imported the GLTF version of the download and here I am just separating the body and the wings and then deleting all the other empty and controls that we don't need. So we're left with just the mesh. Then we want to scale down this bird appropriately, checking the dimension scale and making sure everything is physically accurate so our camera settings work. Then if we head over to texture, we'll see that this model is untextured. But the download includes its separate texture files and we'll need to relink those. So we're going to delete the old setup and bring in our own principal BSDF and an image texture. Correspond that with a body diffuse and then just set up its normal with a normal map and bump and we're already getting a very good looking result. The wings are a little bit trickier, but we're just going to do the same thing, bring a BSDF and the wing diffuse texture, and everything looks okay, but there are some black spots that we need to isolate and remove. To do that, we're going to add a transparent shader and a mixed shader, and in order to mix these shaders properly, we're going to use the wing diffuse alpha to separate these, and we're going to invert this alpha so we're getting the correct results. We can also set up our HDRI and we can also rotate this HDRI until we get the correct feel. Now we're going to pose the bird in the sitting position. So I'm going to separate the tail from the wings and with the wings selected, I'm just going to rotate these so the wings are closed and not open. And we're using proportional editing here to manipulate and distort the wings so it's in the correct position. We can also delete the other side of the wing and then just use a mirror modifier, apply it and then separate it again, adjust the rotation a little bit and now we have two wings in the sitting position. I'm also going to distort the tail a bit so now everything is in place. Now we're ready to customize the bird's texture. This is because I wanted to make it a bit more unique and give it some vibrance and some warm colors. So to do that, we're going to head over to the texture paint section and make sure you head over to the diffuse texture and then you can kind of see where this is going. We have the map of all the bird's texture in place and we have a brush and color. And we're going to use various shades of color with different brush settings such as overlay or mix. And we're just going around and repurposing hues until we get the colors that we want. So I wanted like a bright orange on the neck and then some whites and grays um, until everything looked good to me. But you may notice that from the other side, it is still not painted and that is because the other UV half of the bird is not painted or textured like how we did one side. To fix this, it's pretty simple. You want to save this image and then bring it into a photo editor of your choice. I'm just going to use After Effects really quickly um, and we're just going to duplicate um, a section of this and then flip it horizontally and then we can match it as best as we can to the other side and if we bring this out as an image and then use this texture, everything should look fine. Now we're going to build up the scene using all the 3D assets we've compiled and gathered. So we're going to start with these sets of branches, we're going to copy and paste them in our scene. This will give a base for the bird to stand on and um, we're going to be duplicating this and rotating and just creating a little, little tree scene right here. Uh, we'll even create a little twig for the bird to stand on right here by scaling down. We'll 
bring in our other assets that we found and just paste them now is also a good time to add in a camera and really try to capture uh, a point of view um, you want to have a very tight focal length um, as you want to shallow depth of field and at this point it's all about a matter of creative choice um, get to duplicate assets around bring other assets in so that we could create a little mini forest scene we'll bring in a sun right here and then rotate it to where we want lighting to be um, I'll bring in these bush assets I found that when placed in the background just give the forest some life and vegetation now is also a good time to refine some camera settings so we can head over to cycles um, increase the resolution width so we get a wider aspect ratio um, we'll add in an empty we'll call it focus and then we turn on the field and then focus on that empty We're going to reduce the f-stop or aperture and we're also going to increase the aperture ratio to 2 for a cinematic feel. And finally, we're going to change the camera type to paranomic and increase the lens to about like 70 so we can get a nice stylized curved lens effect. Feel free to also mess around with the Y rotation of the camera to get a more cinematic feel. And now we're starting to get a good looking result. Another effective asset I found were videos of leaf silhouette. And these are just shadows against the sky that uh, we can use to cast real shadows in our 3D scene. I'll have a link in the description to download. Um, you bring that into Blender um, and then we'll mess around in the shading tab in Cycles. So what we're doing here is we're going to mix um, the video with a transparent shader, connect that to a mix shader again. To control this, we're going to connect the video color into the factor. And then using a color ramp, we're just going to dial this in until we get only the tree shadows. Um, you can sort of see the effect. Now we have a sort of moving tree shadow that can cast real light shadows in the scene. We're going to place this over our branch right here. And now we have a more lifelike moving forest in the scene. And now we're ready to start rigging and animating this bird along other elements. So we're going to start by adding in an armature, scaling it down. And in the bone property settings, we're going to enable it in front so that we can see it in front. I'm going to go to edit mode and adjust each point in place um, using a 3D space to navigate. We're then going to extrude just a couple of more bones along the body structure along with one for the head. We're going to select the body to the bone and we're going to parent it to armature deform. And if you go to bone and pose and start rotating things, nothing will happen. And that's because we need to assign weights to each bone. So we're going to select the bone to the object. Now we can select weight paint mode and now we can kind of assign each part of the mesh to the bone so for this bone right here i am assigning all of this head mesh right here so all the head is rotating with the bone do this for all the other body parts too and now when you rotate you should have a pretty nice working um simple rig to animate this i'm enabling keyframe mode and letting the scene play out in real time while also um moving the rotation space in real time um sort of hand animating it in a way and this is a really fun process to animate and it's really quick and easy um, and then we have a pretty good looking um, final bird animation to be honest we could also parent everything to the branch and then just slightly animate the branch um, swaying up and down um, as well as applying wave modifiers to these bushes in the background just to give some sort of uh, movement to the lens blur i'm gonna enable um, this plugin by ian hubert that adds um variations of camera shake um, this is one of the things that sell the effect of the cinematic but yeah finding a way to implement camera shake is really important um, there are a lot of ways to do that and we're basically done with this bird cinematic of course I like to do a bit of post processing so to start things I actually went and added 2d circular solids over the eye to simulate the act of blinking I have it animated for just a frame or two, um, open and close, and I feel like this is something that really um, immerses the scene. I then went and added some god rays to the background while preserving the foreground. I then added some chromatic aberration and increased the contrast, and finally applied my final color grade to my style's liking. And that's basically how you make a close-up cinematic of a bird. Pretty cool. If you enjoyed the video and you're new, then definitely subscribe. Uh, we do a lot of cool things here. I try to post the coolest stuff and give some insight and breakdown into how I do these things. So also check out my Instagram for more frequent updates on little projects and other stuff I'm working on. Um, but anyways, yeah, I'll see you all soon.